Greetings Couriers, Kato Genesis here. In this video you will be receiving guidance on getting all the unique armor and apparel of the Mojave Wasteland in Fallout New Vegas. I will be including a few items that are not necessarily unique but still have rare qualities about them. Some of which are a little strange because they were brought straight over from Fallout 3 which I will also mention. With some wiki help I will be showing you some basic stats and effects of said gear as well. Before we begin, I'd like to talk about reverse pickpocketing. For some of the NPCs that have this gear equipped, some of them you may not want to kill just yet or at all. So this is where reverse pickpocketing comes in. How it works is if you pickpocket them and drop something in their inventory that has a higher damage threshold than what they're wearing, you can leave and come back in a couple of in-game days and they will be wearing that instead. Then it's just as simple as picking their pockets again. So let's begin by story progression with the suave gambler hat. You need Wild Wasteland to obtain this and it represents Indiana Jones signature headwear from the movies. You can find the suave gambler hat in a broken refrigerator a short distance from Good Springs Cave. Second on our list is the Sheriff's Outfit. This is one of the sets that's imported from Fallout 3, meaning it has damage resistance instead of damage threshold. This is found in Prim in the Sheriff's office next to the bed, and you'll quickly find out that the Sheriff doesn't need it anymore. Our next item is the Lucky Shades, with their signature bonus to luck, and a little added bonus if you picked up the Four Eyes trait. These come at high cost of being liked by Caesar's Legion, because these are found in the Legion safe house. When you are liked, you can get the key from Lucius at the fort. We head further north to locate the spacesuit. And though you don't get to ride a rocket into space, the suit itself has a wonderfully high radiation resistance. This can be found in the Repcon test site basement, when you help the Bright Brotherhood with the quest Come Fly With Me. Well, helping or sabotage. Our next gear to acquire is the Brotherhood Elder's Robe. Sadly, it doesn't provide much protection or any bonuses, but it does look okay cosmetically. This is found on Elder McNamara, or Elder Harden if you choose that route, in the Hidden Valley Bunker. Number six on this list is the Regulator Duster. Another brought over from Fallout 3 that provides zero damage threshold, but still keeps the Gunslinger Charisma and Guns bonus. This is worn by the Lonesome Drifter, who is east of Eldorado Dry Lake, camped out next to a Sunset Sarsaparilla sign. Next is a one-of-a-kind bandana worn by Jessup, one of the great cons that helped bury you at the beginning of the game. It has a standard bonus of plus one to perception. Jessup still wears this bandana and can be found in the Boulder City Ruins. Before trying it on, you may want to wash it. Another making its return is the Chinese Stealth Armor. It has a decent overall damage threshold of 15, and a bonus to stealth, naturally. So you can still look good dispatching foes from the shadows. This is found in the offices section of the Hoover Dam. Follow the main corridor and it will loop around to a storage room. A wooden crate inside will have two of these. If you've ever encountered Motor Runner or worked for the NCR, you can safely assume that his helmet is unique, and also a quest item, with a passive bonus for melee weapons. Motor Runner is in Vault 3, pretty much the birthplace of the Fiends. If you're enough of a smooth talker and still have need of him, you can actually talk him out of the helmet and sell him chems later. Speaking of chem salesmen, the Great Con Armored Leather is next in our collection. It carries a fair light armor damage threshold, but also counts as faction armor for the Great Cons. This is worn by none other than Papa Con himself, who is shacked up in Red Rock Canyon, feasting and having a good time. Mercenary types will remember this gear, but this time it's one of a kind. The Explorer's gear gives a melee weapons and guns bonus of two. This is equipped to Orion Moreno, one of the remnants, and his house is just north of Sharecropper Farms. Try being sneaky because he doesn't like visitors. Here's something that's just in between combat armor and the reinforced variant. The Van Graaff or Black combat armor keeps you well protected with a damage threshold of 16. There are two deceased Van Graaff thugs that are still wearing this armor near Durable Dunn's sacked caravan, and we know they won't need it anymore. Going to a party, you're gonna want the proper attire. What better headwear to have than the party hat? Naturally, this is something just for entertainment. Try giving it to Boone for some laughs. This is located on a dead prospector in the devil's throat inside of a truck trailer. Just try not to party as hard as he did, okay? It's really too bad that we can't breathe underwater. Or can we? This can be made for you by one of the boomers after you become idolized and begin the quest Volare. First, you must get to the boomers in Nellis Air Force Base. Dodge and weave the artillery, no problem. Gain the correct reputation and you will be sent to the hangars to help make their dream a reality. Few pieces of gear give a bonus to luck. Another returning is the Naughty Nightwear. On top of the innuendo of getting lucky, a bonus of 10 speech can also be gained. The Naughty Nightwear is sold by Mick of Mick and Ralph's, in the eastern part of Freeside. Contributing several bits of unique gear is the Followers of the Apocalypse, whom you can gain the Followers lab coat from, and subsequently get a plus 10 to your medicine and science skill while wearing it. You are given the lab coat by Julie Farkas at the Old Mormon Fort once you are idolized with the Followers. While you travel to New Vegas, you are sure to come across one or two of the Kings. Their leader, known as the King, is wearing this tan suit jacket combo known as Viva Las Vegas. Naturally, he's in the King's School of Impersonation in Freeside. This one you will probably get one way or another. Of course, I am speaking of Benny's suit. This iconic checkered getup gives a five point bonus to barter and speech.
and it is worn by Benny, who you will initially find in the tops in New Vegas. Becoming a symbol of fear of the people in the wasteland is Caesar and his legion. The light armor you can obtain from him or his corpse reflects his past as a follower of the apocalypse. Caesar is found in the fort, which is only accessible after you retrieve the platinum chip. Be careful not to show this off to your NCR buddies though. You can be the envy of your high class peers with the tuxedo hat. This one and only top hat is worn by Mortimer. He seems to be in charge of room accommodations in the Ultra Lux Casino of the New Vegas Strip. If you learn about their past, you won't feel bad taking it from him in the least. And you'll look good doing it. This one is more of an oddity than a unique. The sleepwear has identical statistics to the sexy sleepwear, but has a higher value when sold, and when it is dropped on the ground it takes the appearance of the naughty nightwear. This is also in the Ultra Lux in the penthouse suite. Find the restroom area and it's in a metal box. It could have been better named the shape-shifting sleepwear. Memories of James will be flooding back to you with the Vault Lab uniform. The only difference from the original being no number on the back of the lab coat. This is sold off and on by Sarah Weintraub in the Vault 21 gift shop. If it's not in her inventory, try coming back in a few in-game days, and bringing her vault suits will probably increase your odds as well. I have a question. Who doesn't want to dress up in dirty formal wear, accented with a California poppy? That would probably be everyone except Ambassador Crocker. You will find him at the end of the strip in the NCR Embassy, for when you want to look your best and worst at the same time. If you chose the former, you may want to go with President Kimball's suit instead, if you don't mind an NCR political leader getting taken out, by your own hands or otherwise. This is worn by President Kimball, and can only be obtained during the quest Arizona Killer or you'll know it when it happens. The last duster type gear we'll be looking at is not unique but has an actual damage threshold. Other than that, its bonuses are identical. It is worn by three NPCs, each of which can be found in the Vegas area. The one referenced though is Red Lucy in the Thorn in Westside. The other two are Caleb McCaffrey, a bounty hunter that starts out in the Atomic Wrangler, or Beatrix Russell, the ghoul merc, in the old Mormon fort. If your resume happens to include robot repair, you may want to claim the now one-of-a-kind Robco jumpsuit. The NPC wearing this goes by the name of Dermot. He can be found in Westside out in the street or in the hotel, and rest assured no one will miss him. You may recall the ordeal of getting Vance's submachine gun and not returning it to Prim when you find it, but Vicky and Vance had headwear as well. Both identical in statistics, they are worn by a couple called the Winds. Their hideout is a fair distance north of Westside. Befriending and joining the followers of the apocalypse will not just yield a lab coat from them, but the all-purpose science suit as well. After joining up, Julie Farkas will give you a key for a safe house that is well off the beaten path, and inside you will find this purposeful gear. There's one set of armor you can gain by befriending one of the followers in particular, that would be Arcade Ganon, and as a result, you can get the Ganon Family Tesla armor. This is considered medium armor, believe it or not. If you have Arcade in your party long enough and discover places with a lot of technology and energy weapons, he will ask you to help him find the remnants. In summary, if you convince him to stay in Freeside, he will disappear for a short time, and when he returns, he will just outright give you the armor. Clearly the followers like to take care of their own. We are at the very last and more unofficial set of equipment due to the specific nature and short time frame you have to keep it, and it is the uniform of General Oliver, the commanding officer for the NCR at the Second Battle of Hoover Dam. The only way to get this without console commands is to take the side of the Legion, defeat him and take it from his body to wear for the remainder of the game, which is sadly not that long. Somewhat discouraging too because of the stats that it gives you, but it's not like there's no other unique equipment to use. And that, my Mojave Couriers, is all the unique armor and apparel of the base game. If you found this video useful, show me some thumbs and or tell me about it in the comments. And of course, if I missed anything, please leave a comment on where to find it and what it is to help out your fellow couriers and myself. This is Kato Genesis, thanks for watching, and may you remain vigilant on the roads you walk.